In our last video, we told you we were at a bit of a crossroads between sharing what's happening in the orchard and tackling a story about a product that's considered a pillar of the homesteading world. And yes, if you've noticed a new backdrop, you're right. I'm under the new kitchen platform. It's been one of our recent projects and we'll share more about it soon. You wanted the heads up first, so here it is. Before we get into it, I wanna make something very clear. This is our experience, that's all. We're sharing what happened with us in hope that if you take this same path, your experience is very different from ours. Hang around to the end because what we were told about the fault will have you shaking your head in disbelief. This story is definitely not how we imagined sharing it in six to 12 months time. It should have been a straightforward success story about finding an affordable alternative to off-grid power. We've seen so many people unnecessarily spend 30 grand or more on off-grid power systems. That just wasn't an option for us. Power is one of the main pillars of homesteading, right alongside food, water, shelter, and community. It's the one thing that keeps everything else moving. So when we started planning our setup, we thought a solar generator, sometimes called a portable power station, would be the perfect entry point. Simple, scalable, and about a third of the cost of a full off-grid solar system. If you've been researching this stuff too, you've probably come across the same videos we did. We found really useful information from the Solar Lab and Hobotech, both great channels for solar generator reviews. We compared everything. EcoFlow, Bluetti, Jackery, Anchor, Opus, not Oops, and Pecron. Each claimed to be the best portable power station or best solar generator. After months of comparing specs, reading reviews, and calculating our energy needs, we landed on what looked like the best solar generator 2025 contender for our situation, the Pecron E3600. On paper, it ticked every box. Decent wattage, expandable batteries, solar ready inputs, and the flexibility to grow with our setup. We thought we'd finally found a way to power our homestead without the 30 grand price tag. But there was one thing that kept coming up in all the Pecron reviews we watched and read, and that was their customer service. Almost every reviewer, even those with glowing reviews, said the same thing. It was non-existent, or nearly impossible to get a response. And when you're investing $10,000 in something that's meant to power your home, that's not something you ignore. So we did what any cautious buyer would do and made sure we purchased through an Australian seller. That way we'd have local support, clear warranty protection, and someone we could actually contact if anything went wrong. At least that was the plan. There was about a six week lead time on delivery and the unit arrived as expected. The day our Pecron power station arrived, we thought we were set. No more loud generators to refuel, no more running out of fuel halfway through the day or night. This was meant to be the fix. Three hours in and the excitement wore off pretty quickly. One panel started bubbling, the coating lifting up like a blister in the sun, then another. Before the end of the week, a third one had actually smoked. We did exactly what you do, took photos, videos, and sent them straight to the seller. Their reply? They said the damage was cosmetic. This footage is another panel acting up. If you're watching from Queensland, you'll know what it's been like lately. High fire alerts and fire bans everywhere. We've got a prepare to leave warning about 20 minutes from us and a couple of stay informed fires roughly the same distance away. So when we smelled smoke and saw a panel puffing like a coal train, our first instinct wasn't to grab a photo. Cosmetic. I sat there reading that, staring at a panel that had literally just smoked, wondering what planet you'd have to be on to think that's a reasonable response. And the line that really got me, if they still charge, we can't give you a refund. From there, it became less about the product and more about how the problem was handled. Every message from the supplier overseas was the same script. Prove it doesn't charge. Show us another video. Wait, send it again. The seller just kept parroting the same lines back to us. After a couple of weeks of back and forth, I'd had enough. 
I reminded them that in Australia, when a product's unsafe, it's a major failure and you can't contract your way out of that. I didn't threaten, remained consistent, laid out the facts and escalated it. And suddenly, after re-reviewing the exact same photos and videos they'd had all along, the tone changed. The next email started with, after reviewing the evidence you've sent us, the two solar panels with the larger bubbling of the protective coating are of unacceptable sales quality, and we do intend to provide a refund. Amazing how that works. In the end, we did get the full refund of all six panels, but it shouldn't have taken that much persistence to get someone to do the right thing. Other than that, the panels, and now the batteries drifting out of balance, the Pecron 3600 itself seems to be doing okay. Would we buy their products again or go through the same seller? Highly unlikely. Once trust is gone, it's hard to rebuild. For us, this was a hard lesson, but one worth sharing. We have much better panels on their way. If you're heading down the same road, I genuinely hope your experience is different from ours. And if it's not, at least you'll know you're not the only one who's been there. Next time, we'll be back to our usual kind of story one that hopefully doesn't involve smoke or refund emails. See you then.